Harbor Supply House. There's so many different things. Burlap is another thing. But you don't want to use something that's been soaked, like rope or whatever, that has chemicals, obviously. You can use bailing twine as long as it's not true. So now I've, I've meandered out and I'm at my hive. So I get my hive tool out and crack it open, go? Not likely. I'm going to encourage you to, I'm going to, I'm going to do something a little goofy here to, act, to uh, exercise a point. My bees are flying, they're there. <coughs> I've walked up behind the hive, not in front of it, and I'm going to walk up and I'm going to give the hive a bow, okay? The better way to say this is I'm going to present myself to the hive. I don't know whether this is folklore or not, but I do this anyway because I have another objective. I'm going to walk up to the hive and I'm going to stand to the side of the hive where I can observe the entrance. Why am I not standing here? Because I'm in the flight path and they're going to get mad at me. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to present myself to the hive. There's people that will go as far as saying you should stand like this and present your arms because when you open up the lid, what's coming in? Your arms. Your choice. You're out there in your apiary all along. If you want to look silly and stand there, that's your choice. <laughs> I'm watching my bees. I'm looking for a personal couple things. And I don't know that I'm standing there. I do have a clipboard. It fell out this morning. I realized it's not in there. But I have a clipboard with that sheet and I check the things off. And I'm watching where the bees are going. I'm watching how high they leave. I'm watching what direction they're going in. I'm watching the recycle of the bees. I'm looking at the landing board. What are the bees doing on the landing board? Are they fanned across the top of the hive? Front of the hive? Are they, last night, it was hot, there were bees standing on the left side, four or five of them standing there just fanning, and bees standing on the right side facing the other direction and fanning, and they're creating that circulation to get the stuff out of the hive. All things that you could observe if you take the time to take a look in your inspection and make notes of it. That's a good indicator of how hot the hive is. You're going to look at things when you look through the hive too. You're always looking for visual clues. I hate this plastic cover. Hate it. Just took it off. I had a swarm hive. I put this on because I didn't have a spare and I just took it off. Every time I take this cover off there's water pooled on top of the thing. These things are just terrible, I guess. That's my assessment. So you're, you're going to be now, you're on focus, you're on kill, you want to know what's going on here. So I'm watching the hive entrance, I'm looking at how many drones are there and what they're doing. I'm going to look up in the air, are bees flying? Circles, what does that mean? I have new bees, they're doing orientation flights. They're checking where they are in relation to the sun and the hive, they're doing all that. There's a lot you can learn just by coming up and standing here and watching the entrance. And again, sometimes that's just your objective. Come home at night, don't have to put on your full regalia, just go out and take a look, have a seat, check them out, see what they're doing. That could be an inspection. I've stood there and I presented myself to the bees very nicely. I'm ready to go in my hive. Let's talk about going in a hive. You have options. I would dare say you should try and find a routine. I'll describe my way, and um, anybody can feel free to augment their way at the end. We'll have a dialogue about that. But I'll talk about some classic things you do when you want to go into a hive. I'm going to pretend my objective is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do a queen right inspection. I'm looking to see if I have a queen and if the colony is healthy. And also, my sub-objective is, where am I at from a Varroa standpoint? So I've presented myself to the bees, I've made note of the weather, the time, all this stuff. I'm going to come in, my smoker is lit, I'm going to smoke the hive. Obviously I have my suit on, and I'm going to, I'm going to make a comment about, popular or not, about wearing a suit or wearing one of these. When you get stung, on the arm, on the hand, on the ankle, on the belly, wherever it may be. Good news for you as a beekeeper is to have a local reaction. And a little side, if the reaction happens quickly, you have a good immune system. If it doesn't, you need to be stung some more so you can develop a good immune system. 
There's two types of reaction. A local reaction, you get stung on the hand and your hand swells up. There's a reaction that's a systemic reaction where you get stung on the hand and your throat starts to swell or you start to have symptoms. Bad, 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 go to the hospital, okay? If you get stung on the hand and you have a local reaction, okay, carry on. Mask it with a little smoke, rub it in the dirt, do whatever you do as a beekeeper. But when you get stung on the face, on the lip, in the eye, because you're not wearing one of these, on the throat, what does a local reaction do? It happens here in your airway. There's a common tenet that says you need to breathe to live. If you get stung on the face, you are very likely in a high probability of having a reaction that could impact your airway. There are people who are so good with bees that they go out every day in a t-shirt, they, they just have that feel, and they don't get stung on the face, the hand, the eyes, the scalp, and all these things. But as a new beekeeper, my encouragement would be, wear one of these, and, and there are beekeepers who have been beekeeping forever, and one day they get stung and they die. It, it happens. There's very, very little reason why you shouldn't wear one of these. Again, it's your preference. If you inspect for a long time and you get that comfort and you have a great handle with working with the bees and you feel good not wearing a veil, bless you. You are taking a risk, but the risk is relatively low if you know what you're doing. So box goes away. I'm going to smoke the bees. I have my smoker. I see people walk up with their smoker and they go like this. What have they done? They've smoked the landing. They didn't smoke the hive. Maybe some of it got in. So you're going to come up and you're going to point the smoker. Well, first off, one of the things I might suggest is you're going to smoke your hand or something. You're going to look at what's coming out of there. Are there brands coming out? Because sometimes the brands get cycled out and they blow out. You don't want to be burning the bees or scalding them. This is clean, soft and smoke. It's a little bit warm, but it's not bad. You're going to direct a couple puffs in the hive. How many puffs do you direct in the hive? I've heard two different schools of thought. Some people will say, you put so much smoke in the hive, you damage the bees, you damage the larvae, they can't get out. Others say, smoke them until they're choking to death, and damn if they'll bother you when you go in there. I'm somewhere in between. I'd give this advice. A couple puffs in the entrance. When you open the hive and you look at the bees, are they taking honey? Which is an objective of trying to smoke them. If they're taking honey, the next time use a little bit less until you, the beekeeper, get the feel of how much smoke you should put in. When they stop taking honey and you open the hive and they go, hey, how you doing? You need to put a little more in there. That's the rule of thumb I'll give you. So a couple puffs in the front entrance, you're going to direct it in. You're going to hear maybe an alarm, fair, you know, alarm response. I'd say if the whole hive goes, you maybe put a little too much smoke in. <laughs> Just a thought. If they, if they have a mass exit and they all come out, the objective is when you smoke the hive and all of a sudden you have a cloud of bees, I think you've given a little smoke, right? So a couple puffs of smoke, they should be taking the honey. Now I'm ready to do the inspection. I've got my veil on, I've got my gloves on, I'm wearing my suit, I'm ready to crack the lid. I take the lid off. This is an important aspect for you. This lid, nine times out of ten, ten, depending on your procedure, will be where you're going to put your stuff. The bees don't particularly like when you take the box and lay it in the grass, I've heard. So most people will take their lid and put it upside down and they will put their equipment on that. Some folks <laughs> bring out an arrangement. They'll bring an empty box. And when they're going to take hives out, they'll put it in the empty box, or they'll put it on the empty box. I know, um, I think I saw Stan was mentioning that the other night. Or not Stan, um, was it Charlie? Charlie. One of you guys. My little red wagon. Actually, it was Scott. Scott was saying he literally brings another box out. I'm going to yeah. move this out of the way. So I told you I'm notorious for kicking stuff over, right? You're in your hive. I have my smoker in my hand. I've taken the telescoping lid or the top cover off. I probably see a couple bees present here around the hole. 
I'm just going to give a couple small pops in there, let them know I'm coming. I got my tool. I'm going to insert it in the corner. I'm going to crack this. Oh, I hate that sound, but it is what it is. You can't do anything. The key is, is you don't want to be doing this. Boom. Bang. Crash. Kick. Smash. Right? You want to be gentle. Slow. You want to have a. You want to have an, a, an a touch to it. But I will say this. When you open that box, know what you're going to do. Three steps ahead, you're thinking. My father always used to say when I was a kid, and you used to have to pay for long distance calls, state your business and get off the phone. <laughs> state your business and get out of the hive. Don't rush, don't slam, don't jam, but know exactly what you're going to do. Think through it, execute it in your mind, and go do it. I pop my inner cover off. A lot of beekeepers will take it, put it right here, and then they'll kick it. Most of the guides will tell you to take it off and put it over here on the other side of the hive where you're not going to be. I always approach my hive from the same way. This side. Every hive I ever walk to, unless I can't get to it, I come to this side. I don't know if it's preference or what. But. And I, I've said this before. I look at the frames as they go away from me. Top box, bottom box, that's not really a box, it's just a prop. T1, T2, T3, T4, T5. Top 1, top 2, top 3. B1, B2, B3, B4, B5. When I'm listening back to my recording on T3, I have X number of brood, cap honey in the corners. I know exactly what I'm talking about. I follow that same protocol every time. That way I know for a fact, I, I know what's going on and I can picture it. Again, your mileage may vary, you do it however you do it. I've taken the cover off, I put it on the side. I'm looking at my box, I probably have bees up on top of the frame, so I've smoked them from the bottom. I'm going to smoke them down. I'm going to give them a second to respond. Now what I have is I have frames presented to me. I have a, I have a decision to make here, or a question for you. I have an option. Top box, bottom box. Which one do I go after first? There's logic to this. If I go in and I pry and manipulate and disturb the top box bees, and then I crack them off and I take them and I stick them over here after I've agitated them, I've really disturbed them. Some things will tell you, crack the top box, Take the top box, put it here, take your inner cover, set it on. You have moved them, but you've not disturbed them. Here's the logic behind this. Take the top box off, put it aside, go through the bottom box, do my business. I'm done with the bottom box, what am I going to do? I'm going to take that top box and I'm going to return it. They're back to business. They're back in order. I've disturbed them, but now I've returned them. Now I could do an inspection of my top box. Top box, bottom box, your preference. Bob and I were having a conversation about our inspections. We were joking the other day, both of us had a revelation. In one of my hives, I haven't been in the bottom box in forever. Because I go in with my objective to find out if I'm queen right. The colony's in the top. I look through to the fifth frame. I've seen eggs, larvae, I may have found the queen. I don't need to go anywhere else. Leave that bottom box alone, okay? I'm going to start for purpose of example with the top box. I have my frames situated in the box here. And if you look at the frames, there's usually a gap on the outside or wherever you happen to have it. Some beekeepers like to spread their frames apart. Some keep them really tight together. That space is wherever it is in your box. Me personally, I always keep my frames all the way together and I shove them to one side. And the reason I do that is because I want this frame to be able to come out with the most space. So I always have them that far over. There is a bad premise to that because they will say for circulation purposes, you want the space on both sides. So again, your mileage may, be, may vary as you set your box up. I have my hive <coughs> and I'm ready to inspect. This is where Gadget Guy comes to play. 
You may or may not have these things.